Little Serp Garage. All right, what do we have here? The Beretta 1951. Or is this called the Brigadier? Or is it the Model 951? Or the Model 51, for that matter. Or the Model 104? Or the Hell One? Who the hell knows? This thing has gone by so many names that it's impossible to search for and really find any information. If you're a big fan of this pistol, uh, Berettas in general, if you're like the guy that knows everything, please do not just dip out of this video. Hang in till the end. I really need... I need to show you something. At the end of this video, I'm going to show you something. And I'm going to need you to give me some answers if you could, please. Um, other than that, to everybody else that's tuning in for the tactical series, there, there's really not much going on here. This thing, 1951. I wanted to bring the, the next Beretta in line after the 34, because you saw the 34. It had some weird stuff that wasn't necessarily stuff that you're used to. Stuff the slide was doing weird stuff. There's weird safeties that act as slide hold opens. There's all kind of craziness going on there, right? Heel magazine releases. Well, this is where it all started to come more towards modern stuff. So this is going to be a little bit more familiar to you. Uh, by the way, these are our realistic snap caps that we have right here. Realisticsnapcaps.com. Check the description down on the bottom. And you're going to have the 10%... Uh, coupon code, 10% off coupon code. This guy offers free shipping. These 9mm ones are dirt cheap. Look at these things. Look at them. They've taken abuse for like a year and a half now. I've beat the crap out of these things. And look at them. These are the 9mm ones. I run these things through everything. And look at them. None worse for wear. All of these, see that like rubbery stuff in there? That silicone in there? Watch, I'm going to show you something. So you saw what that magazine just did, right? That's going to be part of the tacticalness of this thing. Check it out. We're going to drop the hammer on it. We're going to eject it. Hello, we rang the bell. Let's take a look. You can see where the firing pin hit right there. Right? Look at that. Firing pin protection. And it's just over and over and over these things get hit. Sure, you could use a brass uh, spent case, spent casing with the with the primer pocket empty. You're not protecting your firing pin. Then you might as well be dry firing. Or you could uh, have a primer in there that's been hit, and then it's indented, so the firing pin again is contacting nothing. This is nice, nice soft cushion every time. All right, let's get back to business here. So, yeah, there's really, I mean, this is going to, like, bore, this is going to bore us here because we're almost to um, modern times here. We have a, uh, we have everything that you're used to here except for, one thing we just haven't taken one step yet we got a a slide hold open we got a magazine we got a, a a slide release here okay so last round our uh, slide has stayed open so far so good now all we got to do is drop the mag right where's our button the button is over here okay now here's what they did beretta they said okay we're gonna nobody likes this heel release it's clumsy so we're gonna move it to here so that you you have you can go like this. It's easier, you know. What I mean, Which still didn't seem to get the point that by just putting it here, right here, put it here, so that this finger, that this thumb that sits there and does nothing, could release the magazine. So while I'm reaching, look, this drops. How cool is that? This drops. Okay. All I would need is to be able to depress this button with the shooting hand, and unless you do something crazy, I was. I was trying to come up with stuff where, like, after the last round was fired, you toss it up in your hand like this, and then hit the release, and then come back like that <laughs> to put the next to put the next mag in, right? So once again, that was a toss, press, back. I mean, if you really want to get crazy, you could do something like that. But like my buddy tells me, when you're in one of these situations, it's all handshaking, fumbling, sweaty palm can't see can't hear and when it's all over if you ask 10 questions you'll probably get nine of them wrong as to what really happened like these situations you're not going to be doing acrobatics you know what i mean so sitting here in my garage i could do something crazy like that but the bottom line is with this gun there's no way to reach that you're just going to have to reach across press the button to drop the mag then reach for your new mag and then uh and then come in with a new one or 
as you're firing and you know you're getting close to emptying the eight rounds out of here, or the eight plus one, you would already be reaching. If you know you're going to reload, you're already going to be pulling out your new mag. And when you come across with your new mag and you're out, you can always just push with one finger. I only have one mag. So let's just say with this one mag, I just came across, pressed with my finger, the mag's out. And I'm in again, drop, and I'm right back to uh, firing. So is it tactical? Well, yeah, I guess I'd have to say yeah, because it's closing in on, you know, you're closing in now on modern day pistols and exactly what they have to offer. You know what I mean? So, uh, but yeah, this thing could really take a beating. It's got these fixed sights that are like, uh, you know, there's really not much to them, but you get a nice sight picture out of this thing. And uh, unlike typical Berettas, even though you have this open top, uh, it does, he has the ejector here on the side, so it kicks him, it kicks him to the side, as you, as you saw there. It doesn't, uh, it's not that, a lot of them, a lot of these Berettas throw them right up in your face. Um, and powder too, and you know, well, the mess, but with these, uh, not the case, see these things actually do eject to the side, see, so you don't have, uh, that, you don't have those cases jumping right up in your face, and, uh, these are, <coughs> excuse me, these are nice magazines with this metal follower and the windows here to see how many rounds you have, the, the finger groove here on the bottom so that you're, you're comfortable in the grip, nice, yeah, so these things were used uh, these things were used by um, by a lot of uh, nations. You had uh, Italian military, obviously. Israel adopted this thing. Nigeria, Haiti, Iraq, Egypt, and uh, these things were only replaced uh, by in in Italy with the uh, Model ninety two, which was that's that's definitely modern. I mean, that's that's moving into the. I wouldn't even necessarily call that uh, surplus. You know what I mean? Just yet, but I mean, yeah, it was the seventies when they were replaced, but. Um, that would definitely be called more of a modern pistol. But 1951, I'd say, you know, this is a, what is that? Is that before Korea? 1951 was quite a while ago. So um, we could still call this uh, military surplus, I suppose. But, uh, yeah, so that's the story. Now here, uh, so is, is it tactical? I don't know. Who cares? I guess. It's, um, don't get the, don't give me the. Don't get the wrong idea. I like this thing. I really do. There's a lot of people that replace these grips because they don't like the plastic. I'm staying with the plastic. I like the plastic. There's, uh, there's a lot of people that give this thing a hard time. It's sharp. I've cut myself on it. It's got, it's got razor sharp edges all over it. This is razor sharp back here. This is razor sharp over here. But, uh, you know, whoa, see? That's what I'm talking about. You know, look, uh, you got to love this thing. Look how easy the takedown is. Um... Right across, uh, right across with this. This is, see, this is the, um, this is that uh, locking thing going on down here. That's not uh, your typical, you know, Beretta blowback. All these Berettas will blow back until this one, but uh, they they definitely copied the P thirty eight here. But uh, but they did a good, a damn good job <laughs> of copying it. I'll tell you that. Uh, another one we're copying. Everybody copied. And then uh, putting it back together is nice and easy. You know, it's uh, definitely a nice, uh, would be a nice uh, battle implement if you were, uh, as a sidearm, if you were fighting a war, I would suppose. But, um, and the magazines load nice, too. There's no, like, you know, with, without these double stacks, they're all nice and smooth right to the end. You know, there's no, there's no, like, at the end, forcing the last round in or having to use tools to load. They're ni nice and smooth, you know. Nice and smooth. The action is nice and smooth. You know, they, they definitely function well like that. Oh, sorry. Now, uh, let's get to this part about uh, what I need you guys to answer. Here's the story. Let me zoom in. Okay, these things are supposed to have, somewhere on here, a Roman numeral that corresponds to uh, dating it. Okay? And... Uh, I know that sometimes, instead of using the Roman numeral, they would use, just say it was supposed to be VII, they would use a 7. Now I have this down here, okay? I don't know what the hell that is. I'm thinking it's just like a proof mark. I don't think that's supposed to be a Roman numeral, but I can't, uh, 
I can't decipher that. I don't know what the hell that's supposed to be. And nowhere else on here do I have a, um, I got some Italian words. Now, here's the spot. Oh, here, I got a, um, hidden underneath here, I have an import mark. But here, right there, see that? 7S, that's in the magazine well. I have a 7S, and 7, 7 would correspond to VII, which I, when I look on my paperwork shows 1951. So if it was just a 7, I would say, okay, they put a 7 instead of the Roman numeral. Because they do that sometimes, I've read. And, uh, and there you go, that's, that, I would just figure it's 1951. But the S, that S is bothering me. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe that 7S says something, it's something completely different. So, if you know how I could date this thing and what I'm what I need to be looking for, uh, you let me know. And uh, that's it, everyone. Then Beretta 1951. We've learned absolutely nothing. Uh, I do have a video on this gun, like I think I said. Uh, if you want to check out uh, just my video of breaking it down. But this second video of me just uh, rambling on about its uh, tacticalness. Let's just um, let's just act like this never happened. I'm gonna be back later with um, another video to make up for this one. Don't worry, I promise. I'll make it up to you. And uh, thank you, and I will <laughs> I will see you all soon.